All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. We are uh, <clears throat> back again. It is uh, 5 to 5 on uh, Pacific Standard. So uh, we're here for Jiu Jitsu. So uh, we're going to wait about 5 to 10 minutes or so, and th then we will get started. Um, a few things that we should probably go over. It, uh, number one, um, if you guys get an opportunity or when you guys get an opportunity to drill this stuff, you want to try to do it um, consistently. Anytime you, anytime you practice something, just doing it a couple of times does not make you an expert by any, by any means. Um, and, and a big uh, complaint I have about uh, white belts, and it's a strange thing to say that, but it's a, it's a complaint, is when you show something, you're like, oh, I already know that. And um, the truth is, is that, yeah, you may already know the move. You may already have seen it once or twice or maybe even 10, 15, 20 times. But are you really good at it? Can you hit it when you need it? Can you hit it without thinking about it? Can you hit it when it, you need it most? And that's the thing that um, a lot of white belts have a problem with is they feel that they need to, I already know that one, I got to get a new one. I already know that one, I got to get a new one. Um, you should be, in, in my opinion, you should be focusing on what you know and then just keep uh, keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. That doesn't mean you shouldn't learn new information because that's not true at all. But I'm saying when you learn, um, especially the stuff that we've been going, which, which is really fundamental stuff, when you, when you learn this, you, you should try to practice it as much as possible so that when you do get an opportunity to actually use it, you're able to use it with a high level of effic efficacy and a high level of, um, of, of finishing percentage. Meaning once you get into the position, the chances of your opponent or partner getting out of it have lowered drastically. We want to we want to try to hit those things. Um, so, like I said, we have a, a high percentage. Now, um, that kind of bleeds into the, what the next thing is. I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit is um, when you there's no such thing as a hundred percent move. Nothing works a hundred percent of the time. Um, you'll find things that work 50, 60, even 70 percent of the time, but never a hundred percent of the time. Uh, and, and that's actually a good thing because what that requires you to do is requires you to grow. It requires you to try different things. It requires you to, to get to the point where there are, um, when you get to a point where all of a sudden you feel uh, like you're locked into a position or locked into a, a submission or locked into um, uh, uh, trying, to, uh, trying to hit a sweep or whatever and you get stuck, that is the time that you should start to get a little excited. And if you do, you're gonna find that your jiu-jitsu journey will uh, not only, you'll get more out of it, but it'll be a lot more fulfilling as well. Um, the reason being is that as you grow, we get, we, we have to expand our, we have to expand our, our knowledge base. We have to expand our, 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 our um, talent base. We have to be able to, to move forward um, to basically help to, to uh, grow as martial artists and grow as people. So um, and it all starts. It all starts with drilling. It all starts with the understanding and, and getting to comfortable with the basics and fun, basic and fundamental movements of jujitsu. And then as you start to get better at those things, you can start branching out and getting more fancy, um, inverting and, and crazy um, crazy guards and all that other stuff, which don't get me wrong, I, I, I really like. I, I actually, that, that part of jiu-jitsu to me is very cool. I love that stuff, especially the sports stuff where guys are doing like barambolos and inverting and all that other stuff. That's really cool to watch um, and cool to do. I, unfortunately, in my, um, in my, uh, in my experience, or fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, in my experience, uh, I started right at the cusp of when all this, well, actually that's not true. I was probably a blue belt or purple belt when all of a sudden everybody started Baron Boloing and everybody started um, uh, uh, doing like crazy inversions and these insane guards where guys were able to put their feet behind their head and stuff like that. Um, I was was kind of in the middle of jujitsu and that started kind of, um, Kind of catching speed, uh, and and to, when I watched it, I was like, "That's crazy! I'm not doing any of that stuff." And for a couple of reasons, number one, um, I, I didn't feel that I was flexible enough to do any of that stuff. Now, I to this, I still don't feel necessarily that I may be flexible enough to do a lot of that stuff. But I still think it has a, um, it, it has it's a, it's a very effective way of competing. It's a very effective way of. Um, uh, of, uh, of subduing an opponent. So, um, like I said, I, I think that stuff is awesome. But for me, um, I was just focusing on the things that I could do and the things that uh, worked in my in my wheelhouse. Now, when I received my black belt um, about 
four or five years ago now, um, I started to realize that the things that I knew were very flat and very limited. I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have a very um, diverse game. I had things that I was really good at that I did a lot of and that I had a great level of success with. But I started to realize that when I started uh, training with higher level partners, all of a sudden that stuff that I was really good at really didn't do me much good because I, I was like a, a one trick pony more or less. Um, and so now uh, I've tried to expand my game. I've tried to open things up. I've tried to, um, especially my flexibility, I've been working on that. Um, and that will be probably something I work on for the rest of my jiu-jitsu career and probably for the rest of my life. Um, because uh, I don't have uh, the natural physical attributes of a lot of these younger guys that are able, like I said, that are able to bring their legs up over their heads. I, I probably could have done that um, 15 years ago, but uh, now it's not that I can't do it. I just, it's hard for me to do it. And it takes a long time for me to get warm enough and stretched out enough in order for me to be able to do that. Um, so uh, what I'm getting at is like, there's there's time and place for everything in jiu-jitsu. There's a time and place for the sport of the jiu-jitsu. There's a time and place for the self-defense aspect of jiu-jitsu. There's a time and place um, for the, the training and practice of jiu-jitsu. And, it, and it's up to you to kind of try to figure that out. Um, all we can do as instructors and as fellow um, jiu-jitsu practitioners is we just have to practice, uh, sharpen our blade, uh, continue drilling, um, try to understand the basic fundamental movements and see how they work for you. Um, and, and really don't, don't, ever, don't ever step away from fundamentals because those are, in my opinion, the most important part of jiu-jitsu. Um, you will start to realize that the farther along you get, the more comfortable you are with fundamentals, the more that crazy stuff actually gets a little bit easier to do. And that's the thing that I learned is that um, when I started trying to drill that crazy stuff, uh, at first, it was really hard, and I, I, I had a, a really difficult time with it. But the more I the, the more I stuck with it, I started to catch it pretty quickly. I started to catch up to it pretty quickly. Now, um, I, I I I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I've been training for as long as I have. I've been training for like 14 years now. So um, when I learn a move, I can I, I can relative I can get it relatively quickly. Now, when it comes to actually training and getting it live, that's a different story. It still it still takes a little bit of work, but. Um, the point is, is like, I think the reason why I'm able to, to, um, to catch on to those things that I, that, that I kind of turn my nose at, uh, or turn my nose up to those years ago, um, is because I'm, I, I'm continually focused on fundamentals. I, I that, like I said, that's the most important part of my game, in my opinion. Um, I want to be someone that feels very comfortable with fundamentals and, and when it comes to, um, movements and everything else. Um, I think a lot of that has to, a lot of my fundamental movements transfer very well to that, um, that fancy high level stuff. So uh, that's, that's my two cents on that. What time is it, please? Oh, I believe it is 5.05. Perfect. I just rambled for 10 minutes. All right. Very good. So, um, and that wasn't rambling. That was actually my opinion. Um, hey, Potara. So, uh, hey man, I can't see anything without my glasses on. To be honest with you, I can't really see that well with my glasses uh, on as well. Yes, yeah, so um, we actually rebranded this channel. So um, this is my husband, Chris. I know that I used to do a lot of like gaming and stuff on here, but um, I kind of went away from Twitch from a lot for a long, long, long mm. time. And um, when we decided when the quarantine stuff happened, we actually started a YouTube channel. And I figured out that we can stream across multiple channels at the same time. And so um, we really wanted to bring stuff that's really passionate to us on the table for you guys. So um, we're, we're rebranding, this channel is now a yoga and jujitsu channel um, that we do every day during the week. So thank you guys for being here, we really appreciate it. I just wanted to do a shout out real quick because yeah, I, realized for sure. that I know some of you from before and um, we hope that you guys will stick around and hope that you enjoy some of the information that we're presenting. And um, we also have a Discord chat if anybody wants to join it, just to talk, throw memes out, or to even um, join in and work on technique, Crystal will watch you guys and help you guys along. So this channel is really geared towards um, all levels of jujitsu and yoga, um, but we really, really hope that it's beneficial for all of you. For sure. And um, with that being said, we are streaming live on Twitch and YouTube right now at the same time. So um, you're welcome to watch on either platform. Um, but uh, so if you're in a chat or whatever and you were engaging a person that you don't see, it's possible that they're on one of those other platforms. 
Uh, very good. So uh, thank you guys again for joining us. Uh, let's get started. So um, on on Tuesday we started our um, we started our uh, we started a little series uh, from uh, side control. If you mind, um, a little series from side control. Meaning, uh, for, starting with uh, pinning the arm to the ground and working our Americana and then working our straight arm lock. Um, what I, what we're going to do now is a, basically a continuation of that. Um, if you wouldn't mind, could you scoot that way a little bit? Perfect, perfect. Because I'm going to come around the top side here. So um, we're going to continue in that same vein of uh, doing that, uh, doing the attack. So we're going to do this at a couple of different angles. Um, and somebody's talking. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at that chat in a second. Let me finish this, and we'll get to what you got going on there because uh, I can't see anything. All I see is right. Um, so uh, we're we're continuing the same vein of uh, separating an arm from the body and then looking for an attack. So um, on Tuesday we we set it up. Uh, we're going to go around along lines of the same setup. So from my good solid side control position here, I'm going to um, I'm going to bring my hand out from behind Chelsea's head. I'm going to switch my hip and I'm going to um, drive her hand to the floor. So what I mean by that is I'm going to pull my hand out from behind her head here and I'm going to switch my hip. Now, when I switch my hip, I bring my elbow back to my side here. From right here, I'm going to find her wrist and I'm going to push it to the floor here. From here, Chelsea's going to turn her arm over and she's going to try to go to grab her leg, like she's going to protect here. Uh, turn your, uh, so hold on a second, hold on, slow down, slow down. So you're going to turn onto your side, towards the, yep, there you go. Now you're going to grab your, you're going to go, through. that's what I want right there, so come back. Good. So from here, she turns onto her side and she goes to protect. So what I'm going to do here is if you guys notice, uh, bring your hand back real quick. So if you guys notice here, I was immediately starting to attack the Americana. So I can't hit the Americana because she starts to turn and she she grabs a hold. So my arm is underneath her underneath her arm or my, excuse me my wrist and arm, my wrist and hand are underneath her arm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch, meaning I'm going to um, I'm going to start my next series of attacks. So from here I'm going to release her wrist. I'm going to sit back just a little bit and I'm going to turn my hand over and grab her wrist and try to turn her onto her side. And we're going to do this at a couple of angles, so don't worry. So from here, I step over her head, I turn up and turn her onto her side. So when you do this, it's important to realize that if you have a larger opponent, you can still do this. This still works. The thing that you have to remember is, is that I have to pull the close, the bigger my partner is, the closer to um, the either the elbow or the shoulder I have to go. Now watch, if Chelsea fights me here, like not allowing me to turn her over, if I pull on the elbow, I can lift her over relatively easily. The elbow, where the body bends, is where you can control the body. So if the body bends, obviously, the elbow and the shoulder, I can actually control her that way. Turn to your side, please, the same, same position. So I can pull at the elbow. This one works really well. I can pull her up and over. Or if it's not as like a super large opponent, that wor this works on someone that's a lot larger than you. If you have someone that's um, about the same size or smaller than you, you can actually come up by the shoulder here and do the exact same thing. I turn here and turn her onto her side. So let's go one more time. So from here, I'm on the elbow. I step. I go here, I step over the head, and I turn her onto her side. Let's get your butt over this way, please. Perfect. Perfect. So, from right here, I have, I still have control of my partner's arm. She's still doing a good job of protecting her arm, putting her hand on the inside of her thigh, which is exactly what she should be doing. So, first thing I want to do from this position, and I'm gonna, we'll show it at a different angle in a second, but first thing I want to do is I want to get this bottom elbow out of the way. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to step over it and then drag my heel underneath it. So, I step over it here, and now I'm going to drag my heel underneath it. I'll show you guys at a different angle in a second here. From here, I'm going to switch my hand. So, I have my one hand here. I can't quite, I can't quite separate it. I'm going to punch this hand through. One. I'm going to connect my hand to my shoulder. Now, if you guys notice, when I connect my hand to my shoulder, that means it keeps my chest next to her elbow. And I want to keep that elbow-chest connection for as long as I can because that's my strong connection here. From right here, my outside hand grabs a hold of her wrist. And now I'm going to start to sit. I'm going to sit straight up. So I sit straight up like this. I'm using my whole body to pull her arm up. So I lift up here. Now, I immediately switch my hand. So I'm on my shoulder here. I'm going to then grab a hold of my own wrist. 
I'm keeping this elbow connect or this elbow chest connection. I want to keep this seal, meaning the seal of her elbow to my, my chest here. From right here, I'm going to turn up my waist. I want to look over my shoulder. I don't want to use my arms. You guys see, if I use my arms here, I have a lot of play in, her, in, the, in the movement of the shoulder. But if I seal here and now I turn at the waist, I get my tap. So let's have you, let's have your, let's have your head face towards the corner, please. And what was that? Please. Oh, this is the guy we've heard so much about. Yes. Same dude. Having a taekwondo base from high school, you find jujitsu very interesting. Uh, head towards the corner, please. All right, so we're gonna do this again. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, bit too far in the corner. Screw down a little more because no, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna end up on that side. So I don't That's want to make sure I know where you go. Yeah, for sure. All right, so from here we're gonna do the exact same thing. I have my hand underneath the head. My knee's nice and wide here. Her uh, wrist is underneath my uh, underneath my, my my chin here. From here, remember, I switched my hip, meaning I opened up my hip towards her head. So I'm gonna turn, open up my hip hip towards the head. My elbow comes back to protect um, to protect. Uh, from getting caught. So if my elbow comes up here, I've seen super flexible people lift this leg and loop my foot. Yeah, like that. Now I'm in trouble. I, I can't work. So I want to make sure when I do this, I keep my elbow nice and tight to my body. From here, I'm going to I'm gonna put my hand, my free hand here on a wrist, and I'm going to square up, meaning I'm going to go back to my regular side control position, but I'm using this hand to flatten, to flatten out her arm. So I switch my hip, and I flatten out her arm. Chelsea realizes that she's in a bad position. She immediately goes and protects her wrist, which is exactly what she's supposed to do. So from here, I'm gonna, we're going to switch now. So free hand, I let go. I still have my hand underneath her arm here. I'm going to switch my, I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm going to step my foot that's closer to her head over her head. So I step over the head here, and now I'm going to pull her up onto her side. So if I have to, I grab the elbow, pull her up onto her side. From here, this knee comes back down. Let's have you uh, bring your feet towards the camera, please. So, from here, I'm going to bring this knee to the floor. So, I bring this knee to the floor. This knee comes up. I'm going to step my foot underneath her elbow here, and I'm going to slide back. So, what I want is I want her arm underneath. Now, this is not a deal breaker if I can't get this. It's just ideal position. This is, this is best for me because it's harder for her to escape here. With her elbow underneath her, it's easier for her to escape, and I don't want that. So from here, my hand is still underneath. So I'm going to, um, actually, it's supposed to be this way. Is that right? I think it's this way. So from here, I'm going to switch. So my hand comes through. One, I grab a hold of my own shoulder. Number two, I find the wrist here. I create that seal on my seal on my chest. I'm gonna pop my head straight up. Remember, I want to use this as one unit. One unit means I don't do this. I don't go up and then pull. That's not gonna work. I want to make myself one unit. So I pull everything up at once. Here. Now I can switch, and now I'm just gonna turn. Remember, we're turning at the waist. I'm looking over my shoulder. Turn at the waist, looking over my shoulder. Watch. If I just do it this way, it doesn't really work so well. If I here. I gotta keep everything nice and tight. So that's the idea when you ever you hit, um, and this is a this is a Kimura from Side Control. Um, we're gonna have Chelsea do it a couple of times. So, so I want you guys, um, when you guys practice this, remember that seal, that chest, um, elbow seal, super, super important. We wanna make sure when you get to that position, you have that seal. Um, cool, let's give Chelsea a chance to try it. Uh, let's go. Here, is this a good, is this okay, Side? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, Chelsea asked me yesterday to go. She wants to go over. The, she wanted me to go over the technique with before before we did this live. I, the, I refused. The reason being is because for those that are watching this on the recording, you, any mistakes that she makes is actually a good thing because it allows me to explain what's going on and may make it easier for you in case you don't in case you have questions um, and are not available to attend the live stream. So, from our side control position, she's going to switch her hips towards my head. She's going to bring her arm back. You don't have to pick my elbow. Come on. 
Come back. So when you do this, you're just going to pull your elbow back. You're not oh, picking. Okay. You're not picking my elbow at all. Pull your elbow back. Yes, yeah, good. Now from right here, you're going to go after this wrist with this hand. Yep. So you're going to switch your hip, turn back towards me, and square back up. Nice, good. So from here, I'm in a bad position. Typically, what will happen is one of two things. One, she immediately initiates her Americana here, or, or the more the more common reaction is once I realize that my arm is extended away, I'm going to turn onto my side and protect as so. So from right here, she's going to um, find my elbow with her uh, right hand. Elbow. Perfect. Good. From now, she's going to step her left foot over my head, and she's going to turn me up, pull me up onto my side here. There you go. Oh, nice. Good. Very good. So now this knee comes down. At the same time, the opposite knee comes up. Good. Ah. And now you're going to drag this foot underneath my underneath my shoulder and get both your knees on the floor. Good. Nice. From right here, she creates a, a, a seal between her chest and my elbow. She then postures up. As one unit, see, look at that. Even with me trying to hold on here, go ahead. She's still able to get it. Very nice. From right here, she's going to turn it. Her, we'll stay where you are. I'm just sure. letting you talk. Oh, okay. From this, from this position, she's going to turn uh, towards the mirror. She's going to um, keep that elbow chest connection. She's going to turn it your way. So just do I switch rotate. my arms at all? No, I mean I can't really see. But no, you have the Kimura grip right there. That's perfect. So hold on a second. Oh, that, that was the problem. So uh, bring this knee back up. Good. So from right here, you're going to drive this knee through, and then you're going to switch your – so you're going to drive this through, and you're going to switch your hand. So drive it through right here, and then switch your hand. And then I grab my shoulder. You don't need to grab your shoulder. Okay. Grab your own wrist. Right there. Good. Seal. Create that seal. There you go. Posture up. Keep that seal. Good. Turn at the waist. You're up the wrong way. That's what I thought. You said what was in here. Let's try that again. Let's do it at a different angle. Uh, I should go this way. I'll keep my legs flat. This is my bad side. You want to go that way? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to talk you through it? Let me, let, I'll ask you. Okay. So I'm going to come to my side. I'm just pulling the elbow back. I bring this down and square up. So I'm going to wrist lock you. You grab here. All right. And then from here, I'm going to. Hmm. Yeah, okay. From here. Find my elbow. Find my elbow. This hand. This hand, okay. Oh, and then I'm going to turn you. I'm going to. You step over my head. Step over your head. Good. Okay, pull. Drop this Good. knee down. Good. I'm going to switch my arms as I'm driving Good. this in. Okay. And then I'm going to create a seal here, seal on the wrist. Use this to pop up. Use my whole body to turn back. Good. Very nice. Awesome. Very good. All right. Very good. So that's our that's our first attack. So um, the Kimura from side control, really effective technique. Uh, once again, um, creating that seal between the chest and the elbow is really really super important. So um, make sure that you have that. Uh, also, when you posture up, make sure that you're that you're one unit, meaning your arm is connected to your upper, her arm or your partner's arm is connected to your upper body, and you don't let that seal break at all. So that, that was, that's really important. Um, so we're gonna go for our next one. <clears throat> all right, so. From this position, same position here, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to switch my hip and bring my elbow back. So I switch my hip, bring my elbow back. From here, my hand goes, comes across and I go to find the wrist and I pin the, pin the hand to the mat. She turns onto her side and collects. Perfect. From right here, hand, elbow, step, pull. Knee comes to the floor at the same time my opposite side knee comes up. So I switch, knee comes to the floor. From right here, I step my foot over her arm and I drag it back so that I have the, the, the leg sealed here, or the, arms, the arm out of the fight. From right here, I'm now gonna go, uh, I'm not gonna go for an arm bar. Uh, this is not a, um, this is not a, 
of, let's move it this way, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Not a super high percentage move, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try it at the very, we shouldn't try it at all. From here, I'm going to switch my hands again. So I switch my hands again, and I bring my shoulder, or bring my hand up all the way to my shoulder here. From right here now, I'm going to step my foot um, that was uh, that's underneath her arm. I'm going to step that up, and I'm going to bring this other knee up off the ground. So I bring step up, keeping my foot really close to her armpit here. I'm then going to bring my other leg up. So watch what happens if I when I do this is I create space. And if you guys remember, I said space between me and my partner is no good, especially when I'm on top. So I want to try to do this with as little space as possible. So watch when I do this. I'm going to find your wrist here. I'm going to find my own wrist. So I have like a Kimura grip. From right here, I'm going to stay low. I bring my knee up and sit back. You can hold on to your thigh if you want. From right here, it's all easy breezy. So we're going to do this at a different angle. Don't worry. From right here, pop, pop, pop. From right here now, I pinch my knees together. Sorry. And I pull the hand back and I finish with my arm bar. So one more time here, and then Chelsea's gonna go a couple of times. So from here, side control position. I switch my hip, I come bring my elbow back. I then swim my hand through and pin the elbow to the ground. Chelsea turns onto her side and collects her, connects her hand, or protects her hand, I should say. So my hand that's underneath, palm to the mat, fighting the elbow, stepping over the head, pulling up, here, turning on to the side. I then bring this knee down and bring the other knee up. Let's go, let's switch your position here. Let's have you um, bring your head towards the corner, please. Thank you. So we were, we were here like this. So I went from here, so this knee is gonna come down, I'm gonna bring my other knee up. So I bring one knee down, one knee up. I then step my foot over her over her armpit, over her arm here, and I drag the knee through. The reason why I want this, turn on your side, please, turn this way. There we go, turn on your side, there you go. I wanna be underneath her arm here. It makes my life a lot easier if I'm able to capture this arm. So I can show you guys that one more time. So bring this hand down here, like so, turn on your side here, just like if you were, perfect. So from here, I step over the over the arm. I drag my heel back and try. Oh, okay. Yeah. I try to go underneath her underneath her arm here with my foot. From right here, I then grab a hold of her wrist, grab a hold of my own forearm, and now I'm going to do that little funky movement. So I bring my uh, left knee up. So I bring my left knee up right here, and now I pivot to my right and bring my right knee up off the floor. Here, here, sit, pinch everything nice and tight. You can grab hold if you want. Pinch everything nice and tight. I then separate, one, two, separate. I pinch my knees together and pull the arm back and get my arm bar. Remember, lift from the hips, pinch your knees together when you're going for your finish. Go ahead. Want me to walk you through it? Um, yeah, the first time. Okay. Switch your hip, elbow back. Don't grab my elbow, good. Pin. Good. Turn, turn. Grab the elbow. Good. Step over the head. You're going to pull me up. Switch your knees. Good. Good. So this foot now is going to step over my arm. Good. You're going to drag that heel back and bring this knee to the floor. Perfect. Good. You okay? Yep. Good. So from right here, you're not going to try it. You're going to go for your second. You're going to go for your arm bar. So you're going to bring your... Uh, Left, yeah, your left knee up off the mat. Good. You're going to pivot and you're going to bring your right knee up off the mat and you're going to look to fall backwards. There you go. Nice. Good. Very nice. From right here, you don't have to, um, you can keep your Kimura grip. It's fine. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. So from right here, elbow chest connection, elbow chest seal. Good. You're going to um, straighten out this leg and you're going to pull back. There you go. Don't need to pull hard. Pinch, pinch your knees. Good. Uh, 
So one more time. I'm going to switch my hips. Drag that elbow back. Forward, square back up. Grab the elbow. Set my knee over. Pull you. Switch my legs. I was going to kick that over, but I don't need to. I'm going to come and drag my knee down. Step up with this hand. Grab my Kimura grip. I'm going to pivot. And kick this leg out. Like fall back, put your hands together. Very good. So, um, it, it's like I said, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of drilling. The more you practice, the better you're going to get at things. And so, um, I, I give yourself an opportunity drill this, drill this, drill this. If you guys have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. You're welcome to message us on any of the platforms Facebook, YouTube. Um, Twitter, whatever. I don't, do we have a Twitter account? Probably. We do have a Twitter account. We do have a Twitter account. So <laughs> feel free to message us with any questions about this. Um, thank you guys for spending the time and watching. Uh, Chills. Um, we are here Monday through Thursday at 5 p.m. for Jiu Jitsu. Tuesdays and Thursdays are no key. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are gi. And on Friday, we do Jiu Jitsu at 2 p.m. I also teach a yoga class Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon, all at a specific daylight time. Please make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. Um, we are really, really honored that we get to do this, and we um, we know a lot of people are going through some tough times right now, and we feel really blessed to have the opportunity to connect with you in this way and to have the opportunity and the time to really um, release this free content and stuff like that. So we're we're just we're just really we um, the best way to support our channel would be to would be to follow, like, subscribe, depending on wherever you are. Um, other than that, we're at Heart and Soul BJJ on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you guys can connect with us on all of those platforms, and we hope that you do. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining us today. Let's call it. Oops.